For the second exercise in the chapter on decision making and if statements, we're going to create a very simple calculator program. Eventually, I want to develop a calculator class that you could pretty much plug into any program, but for now, we're just going to start out simply by writing a program that allows the user to enter a couple of numbers and an operator, and then we'll display the results. So I've got a skeleton program already created, so let's get started. The first thing I want to do is create a variable to store my operator. We'll call it string op. Then I want to create two variables for my numbers, number one and number two. And we're going to make this an integer calculator, but it would work just as easily with double. In fact, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's just change it. That way we can handle any number that we come across. Now we're ready to begin prompting the user. Those are the only variables that we need. But we do need a couple of scanner objects. So before we prompt the user, let's create two scanner objects, one for the operator and one for the numbers. Remember, the scanner class has problems when you switch from string to integer or string to numeric input. So when you have input of more than one type, then you probably need to have more than one scanner object. That's just a peculiarity of that class. Now we're ready to prompt the user. So we'll write system out.print, enter the first number, and then number one equals input number, next double. Then we prompt the user to enter the second number, enter the second number, number two equals input number, dot next double. Now we prompt the user to enter the operator. Op equals input op dot next. Now we're ready to write our series of if else if statements. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the operator that the user entered and then perform the appropriate arithmetic for that. So we're going to write if op equals plus system out dot print line number one plus number two. Else if op equals minus system out dot print line number one minus number two. Else if op equals asterisk or multiplication system out print line number one times number two else if op equals division system out print line number one divided by number two else and we'll use this else if the user enters an operator the system doesn't recognize Okay, and that should be the complete program. Not all that difficult, but a good demonstration of if-else-if. So let's save it. Bring up our DOS window. Let's clear the screen. Compile it. Cap 8 part 8 dot Java. Oh, I see. Okay, let's see if that fixes most of our problems. Clear the screen. Compile again. There we go. It's amazing what one simple little mistake can cause. Okay, so let's run the program. Enter the first number. We'll do simple one, two, three, plus is 5.0. That's right, because we are working with doubles. Let's run it again. 12, 11 times is 132.0. That looks good. 3.25, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16. To a certain number of decimal places, but that's another lesson for another time. So now we'll do division 144, 12 divided, and that's 12.0. So let's look at the program one more time. And all we're doing here is simply keying in on the operator that the user enters. If it's a plus, then we perform addition. If it's a subtraction sign, we perform subtraction. If it's multiplication, we do multiplication. And if it's division, we do division. We didn't test the didn't recognize. Let's try that real quick for fun. Two, two, and let's try, oh, caret symbol. In some languages, that means exponentiation. And it says didn't recognize operator. So all of our functions work correctly. So that wraps up the chapter on decision making. Decision making is one of the most important control flow constructs there is. The second one we're going to look at, which we'll start in the next chapter, is repetition or looping.
and we'll study two types of loops in the next chapter, the while loop and the for loop.